Usually we start off these Thursday episodes with the news segments first, then the AEW Dynamite review, but today those parts are one and the same, as last night's episode was one of the most exciting episodes of wrestling programming I have ever seen. 4 out of 10, Bret Hart. I avoided all spoilers before watching Dynamite because I didn't want to know the result of John Moxley versus Kenny Omega for the AEW Championship. Little did I know that would be the third most newsworthy thing to happen. So let's start with WWE Hall of Famer Sting debuting in the promotion. The theme of the pay-per-view level TV special was Winter is Coming. About two years after Winter is Coming was relevant, but it was actually there in front of us all along because while Winter from TNA didn't debut, TNA did and so did Sting. Following a really fun, long built up tag match between Darby Allen and Cody Rhodes against powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks, which was mainly to continue putting over Hobbs for being bloody massive, Darby pinned Starks with the coffin drop. Team Taz started to beat up Cody, Allen, Dustin Rhodes, and even Arn Anderson afterwards. But before you can ask, what about the other 38 members of the Nightmare family coming out to help? The lights cut out, a Winter is Coming promo ran looking like a commercial for the Norwegian tourist board, and then freaking Sting walked out on the stage in full face paint covering his age, wearing his brand new AEW merch because they are just a t-shirt company after all, with snow falling all around him and Tony Schiavone screaming, this is the first time in 18 years Sting is on T. N. T. He got into the ring and stared into the very souls of Arn, Cody and Darby, lingering on the latter the most, potentially teasing a TNT title feud between them. Sting has said in the past that he can return to the ring following surgery to correct his spinal stenosis, just like Edge did at the start of this year, and commentary then announced Sting is signed to a multi-year deal. It was freaking epic, and made me feel like I was watching WCW Thunder on Channel 5 as a 12 year old again, that was the only show I could watch. Thank you AEW genuinely for making me feel that way again. Shivani will interview Sting on next week's show, where we'll likely find out what exactly he'll be doing in AEW. Who do you want to see him feud with? Let me know in the comments down below. And that debut was arguably topped by that angle in the main event, where Kenny Omega won the AEW Champion Championship with Don Callis' help and announced they'll be taking the title to Impact Wrestling. Moxley and Omega worked a really great 30 minute match which started with them telling the story of Moxley's power versus Kenny's speed entirely through physicality to Omega working over John's left leg and then Moxley just having enough and wanting a gentlemanly slugfest, politely setting them both up on chairs to trade strikes. The last 10 minutes saw the V-trigger portion of Omega's match where he hits almost exclusively V-triggers, which I'm actually totally fine with. But Moxley laid him out with a paradigm shift on on the outside on one of the large radiators, talk about backstage heat, and then down came Don Callis. Callis has been Impact's executive vice president for several years now, but he's also been announcing on Kenny's big AEW matches over the last few months, making his presence on commentary for the Dynamite main event feel totally normal. AEW pulled a masterstroke of hiding their huge angle in plain sight. Callis went to ringside to ask the referee for more medical attention on Omega, so Moxley punched him. With the referee's back turned, Don had slid a microphone to Kenny, which he used to bust Moxley open, hit four V-triggers, and the one-winged angel to win. The microphone was a poetic foreign object choice, as this angle now becomes about the explanation. Rather than celebrate in the ring, Callis grabbed the belt and hurried Omega off to the back. The commentators are screaming screw job, other wrestlers are yelling at them backstage, Eddie Kingston is weirdly still calling out Lance Archer. Kenny got into a car and Don told Alex Marvez they'll explain everything on Tuesday. The dynamite is on a Wednesday, Marvez pointed out, presumably meaning nothing could possibly happen on dark. That's because they'll explain all on Impact wrestling. Holy F-balls, Tony Claus just got us an interpromotional AEW vs Impact War for Christmas. Science has told men all their lives that they can't experience multiple orgasms. Thank you AEW, thank you for proving that wrong by doing a Sting debut and Impact Invasion in the same night. 
Callus has since tweeted, AEW, screw AEW, hear all about it this Tuesday on Impact Wrestling on Access TV. Thanks for the invite, Tony Khan. While Impact Wrestling themselves posted, Tuesdays are the new Wednesdays. The interbrand matches are mouth-watering, particularly for the women's and tag divisions. FTR jumped on that right away, tweeting out their Christmas list for Santa Khan, Motor City Machine Guns, and The North, while Carl Anderson tweeted, here we go. And Luke Gallows reposted Generation Me's TNA photo with a New Japan gif of their own, hopefully teasing an interpromotional inter Bullet Club AEW versus Impact Champions tag match of the Young Bucks versus the Good Brothers. What do you think will happen next? And will you be watching next Tuesday's Impact? Let me know in the comments down below. And almost lost in all of this, we've got a new heel AEW champion. That's huge in and of itself, with 2021 set to be the year of Kenny Omega. It really is a masterpiece of booking on so many levels, because how do you get passionate, loyal AEW fans to boo one of the company's founders? You have him betray that very company to go elsewhere. And the pop when Hangman Page finally confronts him is going to break my new orgasm record. Tony Khan got a lot of heat last month when he teased a shift in wrestling's balance of power, and fans were disappointed when that didn't immediately happen, only getting Pac returning after eight months out. Well, I hope Tony is enjoying a well-earned you all today. Elsewhere on the show, MJF and Orange Cassidy will fight for the diamond ring on next week's show after being the final two left in a really fun battle royal. Chris Jericho versus Kaz was awesomely solid and nearly caused the inner circle to break up. And Thunder Rosa attacked Britt Baker again after a really cool submission style match with Layla Hirsch, who is legit Lady Taz. Luke and I will do a full play-by-play -play review of Dynamite in our live podcast today. Follow us on Twitter at WrestleTalk underscore TV to let us know your rating which is currently 73.5% excellent, the highest proportion and highest amount of votes we've ever had. Because it was. Dynamite wasn't just 4 out of 4, it was 10 out of 4. Take that, Bret Hart, I am versed you. It was one of the best episodes of wrestling TV of all time, and I will goddamn cherish it forever. And now here's everything else going on in wrestling news. Thanks for your support on Patreon, Chris, the Cypriot Sensation Patrol, and Wonderwall, Brian Gallagher. In the first half of the pandemic, WWE was heavily criticised for the safety measures they undertook to protect their performers. From initial lacklustre testing methods, two separate outbreaks that significantly affected both NXT and main roster booking, not checking in on those that had actually tested positive for the disease as Renee Young revealed, and reportedly forbidding those who had tested positive from announcing it, to being investigated as a Covid hotspot for three separate locations, running shows in the first place, and suspiciously donating a huge chunk of money to the state of Florida directly before professional wrestling was announced as an essential business. That is all enough to win them a prize for the best COVID-19 awareness campaign. Who was the runner-up? Alex Jones. At the recent Synopsis Digital Model D Awards, WWE, alongside their partner Americares, beat out five other nominees to win the best COVID-19 awareness campaign. A little too aware for some performers, though, as Fightful Select is reporting a top NXT superstar has contracted the virus. The report adds they were not scheduled to perform at TakeOver War Games this Sunday. This week's episode of Raw featured the heavily promoted number one contenders triple threat match, but it only drew an average of 1.74 million viewers, which was down 4% from last week's episode. The December drop in ratings is fairly standard, and no doubt interest will pick up slightly when Royal Rumble season rolls around. Or Impact invades them as well. And we end today with the sad news that WWE's first ever Intercontinental Champion and legend, Pat Patterson, has passed away at the age of 79. After the news broke yesterday, an outpouring of memories and support came from all corners of the wrestling industry, with several wrestlers remarking how Pat was one of the most kind-hearted and passionate individuals the wrestling industry has ever seen. But not only was Pat a successful wrestler, producer, and mentor, he was the creator 
of the Royal Rumble, possibly the most beloved wrestling gimmick match in history. Pat was also the first openly gay wrestler, the oldest person to win a title in WWE history, winning the 24-7 title last year at the age of 78, and a WWE Hall of Famer. Dave Meltzer has described Pat as Vince McMahon's right-hand man and one of the chief architects of WWE, playing an integral role in helping it become a global phenomenon. WWE has created a typically heartwarming tribute video for Pat if you would like a further look at his legendary career. Rest in peace, Pat Patterson. There's been a major backstage power shift in WWE. Press the video on the right to find out more, and press the video below that to watch Wrestling Daily from last night, where Alex McCarthy and Louis Dangor go over the paranoia spreading amongst WWE wrestlers over their job security and much more. Subscribe to WrestleTalk for daily wrestling news videos. I've been Mr. Davis. Jam that jam.